Hey there viewers and fellow DIYers, welcome back to the as promised second video about building the cable which will allow you to take advantage of the internal 5 volt power supply on various Modus and Vantage Pro. This video is predominantly of course going to be about building the cable. Before I get to that though I did want to very quickly recap the point I was trying to make in the first video and I'm only doing that because somebody said that they couldn't see what I was doing uh, in the first video and somebody else made a comment that really made me wonder whether or not I was getting my point across uh, very well. So I wanted to just quickly recap that uh, before we get on to the cable build. So this is an aftermarket pressure transducer and I wanted to use this pressure transducer on my Vantage Pro uh, and my Modus and uh, what I'm going to tell you also applies to the Varus as well. Uh, in order for this pressure transducer to work on Varus Modus or Vantage Pro, it has to have 5 volts applied to it. And the way that you would do that uh, is really the crux of the whole matter here. That's the decision you're going to have to make. A lot of guys who are already using aftermarket pressure transducers on Varus Modus or Vantage Pro are supplying the 5 volts necessary to make this work uh, externally meaning they're building an external 5 volt power supply and then wiring that external 5 volt power supply into the cable and then they're able to use it on any one of these three tools. So those external power supplies come in basically two different configurations. The first one is like this uh, that you see behind me and it's an external 12 to 5 volt uh, converter and one side of it uh, you would solder or connect alligator clips to and you would connect those to your battery typically the battery of the car or it could be any other battery for that matter and then the other two wires are the output from that and they go to the pressure transducer and what you would do is you would wire all of those connections together and a lot of guys put them in a box and some guys put switches and lights on them and, and other things and then uh, you know once it's all wired into the cable, uh, you're ready to use your transducer and it'll work just fine. The other option is to use a 9 volt battery instead of the car battery, but you still have to either wire in one of these regulators or some guys are actually, you know, building their own regulator with one of the uh, voltage regulating uh, chips uh, or components. So that, that's another option, but either way, you have to wire everything into, uh, you know, this cable, and a lot of guys, you know, will wire it into a box to, to sort of keep it all uh, contained. So that's, that's the external power supply option. And that's what I was going to do, too. Uh, but then I discovered that all of this, all of this extra work that you would have to do is already been done and it's already been done by Snap-on in the Varus and Modus and Vantage Pro. The 5 volt power supply that you need to make these work is already inside the tool and waiting for you to use it. And that's really what I've been trying to tell you all along is that all you need to do is connect two wires in the end of this connector and you're ready to go. You're all powered up. So what's what are the main benefits of doing that? Well, I, I guess to recap, uh, the main benefits of using the internal 5 volt power supply from the tool are uh, a less expensive cable, a more compact cable, an easier to build cable and store, I guess, as well. But mostly, uh, what it allows you to do is take full advantage of the self contained nature of the Varus Modus or Vantage Pro. Um, you can use the same 5 volt power supply on your aftermarket pressure transducers that Snap-on is using on their $350 pressure transducers. It's there, so why not use it? Um, and, and really that's the, that's the entire point uh, that, uh, that I've been trying to make all along and I hope that that makes more sense. So let's take another look 
at the 5 volts which appears on the auxiliary connector of the Verus Modus and Vantage Pro. Um, as I said before, the Verus Modus and Vantage Pro all have these auxiliary uh, connectors or auxiliary jacks on them and pin 1 of this connector will have 5 volts on it and pin 5 will have ground on it when the tool is put into the pressure transducer mode. And I tried to demonstrate that to you uh, by using this 9-pin male connector with two wires uh, already soldered to it. So pin 1 is going to be power, pin 5 is going to be ground, and I simply have these wires running to the leads on my multimeter. Nothing fancy. And the reason that I chose this uh, for the demonstration rather than just taking my meter leads and probing the uh, pins on the jack here uh, was because in the end this is exactly what's in here. So to me I was I felt like I was demonstrating the incredible simplicity of this arrangement by using this exposed connector uh, instead of the meter leads. That's all there is to it, just two wires. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take this 9-pin uh, connector and I'm going to connect it to the tool here. And then I'm going to uh, turn the tool on. And uh, I've got my, you know, my voltmeter here set to DC volts. And as soon as I acknowledge uh, entry into the pressure transducer mode, uh, you can watch the voltmeter. And there you go, 5 volts. So I've got 5 volts on the black wire and I'm using the yellow wire as ground. So now uh, that 5 volts is running you know, through the cable to the pressure transducer and the pressure transducer would be powered up. No need for the external power supply that I showed you in the previous uh, clip. Uh, it's, it's, it's right here inside the tool. The same one that Snap-on uses to power up their $350 pressure transducers is sitting there waiting to be used. So let's take it a step further and I'll uh, use the cable uh, to show you one more time that it's going to work. So I'll disconnect this and so this is the actual a cable that I've been using. So inside of this is nothing more than this, two wires connected up. And then uh, this is the transducer end of the cable, a power ground, and then the top one is the signal wire. And then if you're wondering what this is, this is the signal wire. So this one runs all the way through the cable to this top pin here on the connector. And uh, it is not connected at all inside of here. This red, line, this red lead runs all the way through the cable but is not connected here at all. So I'm going to take this and plug it into the auxiliary jack. And not that it matters for this demonstration but this is your signal wire. So this is your output from the transducer and you would choose whichever channel you want to monitor your signal on and plug it into that channel. So now I will uh, Go ahead and acknowledge entry into the pressure transducer mode. And uh, we'll use the meter leads this time to look for that 5 volts. And I should be able to do this. There we go. So there you have it. Uh, if you look at the meter, you see that you have 5 volts. So this tool, just like I demonstrated with the black and yellow wired connector, is now supplying the 5 volts that I need to the pressure transducer to make it work. And that's it. That's all I was trying to demonstrate to you uh, before, guys. So if I were actually getting ready to use this pressure transducer to monitor, say, uh, in-cylinder waveform, a cranking compression waveform, uh, fuel pressure, exhaust back pressure, whatever the case may be, this thing is powered up 
and ready to use. So I would connect it, I do my calibration, and now all I have to do is connect the transducer to the adapter of my choice, and it's ready to be used. So that's now that's just a quick recap uh, of what I was trying to show you before, and I think. Uh, you know, what you're seeing here is a fantastic example of the self-contained nature uh, that Snap-on built into this tool uh, that makes it so, so nice. And uh, I think if you consider this uh, and compare it to the other options, you know, these external power supplies, this is a much more simple way of doing the same thing. So I hope that this view uh, you know, helps a little bit more than the view that I showed you before. Well, hopefully that little recap helped. The rest of the video is about building the cable, and I just left in the footage of me doing it. Uh, you don't have to do it my way, but perhaps uh, some of those ideas will help you. One of the most important things about building the cable that you need to consider is whether or not the auxiliary jack on your Verisor Modus has a little white plug in it like this. If your Verisor Modus has a white plug in pin number 6 like this one, then you need to modify your cable accordingly. Uh, specifically, you need to remove pin number 6 from the male connector on your cable. I've put in the footage of me doing it with my soldering iron uh, to show you how it's done. And it took me about 4 minutes uh, using my soldering iron, so it's pretty straightforward. If you don't have the pin in the auxiliary jack of your Verisor Modus, then you don't have to do anything at all. Just wire your cable up and start using your transducer. And hopefully, uh, you know, all these little tips will help you, you know, get your cable built so that you can start using your transducer. Uh, if you've decided to do this and you've got a success story to share, I'd love to hear it. And as always, thanks for watching. So I was able, uh, you know, after doing a little bit of homework to come up with these, and it's an exact match slide lock connector just like the one on the tool. So it's a 9-pin male. It's got the slide lock, and then uh, this is the just a typical 9-pin male housing. And I have here a banana lead, so this is a four millimeter banana, and I cut it to length, and this is a piece of the connector that allows you to put this wire in either this position or this position, so you have some routing options. And then what I did was I drilled, actually this was solid, so I drilled a hole in this and then put a little bit of heat shrink here just to create a strain relief so that this you know, the wire won't pull out of the connector over time. And then unfortunately, I have this lousy cable here that I sort of found lying around. And uh, uh, it's got five, it's shielded, it's got five conductors in it. I'm using three, so I'll use power and ground. And then this will be my signal wire. Uh, so that's basically the setup. I've got the connector, the 4 millimeter uh, signal wire lead that goes to one of the channels on the tool. And then I've got the wire here. Alright. 
So now, what I'm thinking is that as I heat these wires to, to tin them and then to get them into the connector, that'll prevent that insulation from shrinking back. So now what I'm going to do is cut the exposed wire here to the appropriate length to slip inside the connector without sticking out too far. And I'm way too long here. So what I'm going to do is just very quickly I'm going to tin these ends and then I'll snip them back and hopefully get it to the perfect length to slide into the connector. Okay. All right, so those are tinned. <clears throat> now I can snip them to the appropriate length. So I'll just take it, take one of the ends and slide it in there and you can see that it's you can see that it's too long. So I think what I need to do is cut that about third less let's see here so that's absolutely perfect see that virtually no exposed wire and as long as the insulation doesn't strip uh, doesn't melt back there you can see that one's a little bit long still as long as the insulation doesn't melt that should be a really nice connection let's look at this one Boom. Right up against the, uh, the end of the wire, so there you go. This one can actually be just a smidge shorter. And there you go. I'm just going to slide these in here like so and let the tool hold everything in place for me. There you go. I think you guys can see that pretty well. All right, let's see if I can get in here and get this done. So here we go. Let's see if we can do it one more time. Like I said before, on my last several tries, the insulation would simply melt back as soon as I applied any heat to the wire, even for a split second. And uh, now uh, you can see that, you know, with that heat shrink tubing on there, it prevented it from shrinking back. Now that that's done, I've got my signal wire here, and I'm going to go ahead and trim this. And then I'm going to attach the wire from my 4 millimeter banana uh, to the white wire. I've already had it connected once. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and do it again. I'll trim this wire. I can leave it as long as I want. And my original thinking was that I was going to wrap it around and then lay it over the top of the connector like that so that there's no funky bends because there isn't a lot of room inside the connector itself to, you know, put stuff with heat shrink tubing on it. So, as you can see, that, you know, that takes up quite a bit of room in the housing here. So, we'll try to make that work as best we can. But uh, let me go ahead and cut this, and then what we'll do is we will solder that on. So let's see, I'm going to leave it a little bit longer. There we go. And I'm going to do the same thing that I did before since it worked so well. And I'm just going to cut a little piece of this heat shrink tubing off. 
and use it to prevent my insulation from shrinking back on these vintage wires. There we go. I really like that. Okay, um, so here's my uh, four millimeter banana wire. I need to put a little bit of heat shrink tubing on this <clears throat> because once that joint is overlapped, uh, there's actually quite a bit of, uh, you know, once this joint is overlapped, there's going to be exposed wire. So we don't want to have that. What we'll do is we'll slip this onto the wire. And now we are going to take another stab at soldering these two wires together. So I want to solder the white to my signal wire. And you can see there the length is just about right. That's all that takes. Let's put this wire underneath and see what happens. Yeah. Okay. I think that's good. Let's look at it a little closer. Yeah, I think we got it. I think we got it. Let's look at the other side because you can't just look at one side and judge. Yeah, that's good all the way around. That looks... Looks good to me. I can definitely live with that. All right, let's put our heat shrink on here. There we go. All right. Okay, so I think I think we are done with soldering. Got our connector soldered up. That came out pretty decent. And uh, we've got signal wire. And let's see if we can put together our connector now. So this is what we have so far. Okay. All right, so we need our the housing. Oh, now there is one other thing I need to do. I'm going to put a little bit of uh, heat shrink on this to keep these ends from from fraying. And it's also something good to have uh, to you know combat this strain relief from digging into the wires too much. So I'm going to go ahead and put my strain relief right about there. Tighten this down. And now we need to start putting this together. So I'll slide that in like that. And I can, I know that my wires are too long, but I did that on purpose because I've had so many problems with these wires before that I just I just wanted them, I'd rather have them long than too short. And the first thing I need to do is put my slide lock on. I forgot to do that last time. <laughs> and uh, wasn't very nice. All right, so now I'm going to go ahead and, sorry guys, slide this like that. And that's how my connector is going to go in. It's a little bit long. They're a little bit long, but they'll go ahead and uh, they'll lay right down. So now the other thing I want to do is I want to wrap... I want to wrap this signal wire connector over the top like this. And here's why. I want that to lay...
I want that to lay just like that inside the connector. I didn't want there to be any sharp bends if I could help it. So yeah, it looks like spaghetti in there, but there's no sharp bends or weird stuff going on that over time, you know, might cause a problem. I'm going to go ahead and lay this down a little bit better and then pop this back in. And there you have it. So, you know, given the small space that we have, I think that that's going to work out pretty well. Let me try to move this this way to get a little bit more room in there. That won't work. So it has to go just like that. So there you have it. I think I can live with that. So what I'll do now is I'll take the top and snap that in there. That'll help hold everything in place. And now I can put some screws in to hold this nine pin connector in place. Okay, so there you go. So there's your slide lock connector uh, all ready to go. And uh, here's the completed connector. So you've got your four, milli four millimeter banana lead coming out of the side. And then, this, so this is gonna go to your, one of the channels on your tool. Here's our connector with the one pin missing and a slide lock. So that's it. That is our connector. Now all I need to do is take the other end of this wire and connect the pressure transducer to this and then uh, I'm ready to you know give this a try. Got to put a couple of little screws in here to hold the cover on but that's that's it. So that's half the job done. Here's the other end of the uh, transducer cable. So this is the uh, transducer end and here's the pressure transducer. So I've got my wires cut. I'm just going to join these together, uh, the appropriate colors to the appropriate colors on the connector side that I just finished. And that ought to do it. So, you know, there's nothing special here. I'm not going to really talk much about it other than to say that I'm going to go ahead and stagger the the wires inside here so that when I do heat shrink each individual wire there isn't a big fat clump of heat shrink in the middle of the place where they connect. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and uh, not much commentary, just going to go ahead and speed it up and you can see what it looks like when I'm done.
it's done and uh, now I am ready to connect to the tool and I'll of course uh, plug my pressure transducer in and that should be the completed assembly.